could be right there when something would happen. I just don't understand why it's not required the monitors in every house for total public safety. If, if it's that much of a threat. Those individuals that, that are wanting those monitors can't get them placed. In, a, in evaluating the risk around you, you have to take all of those things into consideration. As far as the other traveling public, there's, there's the outdoor air monitoring going on again to, to see if there's any signs of changes in risk with that. Uh, the, the risk is present, but not presenting itself to, to uh, make any changes to those areas. In all so, of the indoor monitoring, we've not seen any positive hits of LEL or H2S. In all of the area monitoring, we've not seen any elevated levels of concern. We, so they have, they have, if, um, if um, we're worried about gas being trapped to, to trigger the LEL, mm -hmm. then is it is it that the location of the monitors in the wrong place? Uh, within the houses? No, I, I will say not. And it's my understanding, I don't go in any houses, so I don't know. It's my understanding through their contract that the LEL monitor should be up because gas rises. H2S is heavier than the air, it should be uh, along the floor. I'm assuming that they did that on all the houses because they indicated that they were making changes and put the LEL monitors up, but I don't know because I don't go in the house. Okay. Hey, did but, it but going house. back, yeah. should should they be in a closet or should they be under a cabinet or should they be out in, in, in the open area? I think that all the areas would be great. Wherever you have a penetration through the slab would be great, but right. again, this is in general, you, you want to get where the where the residents are is, is where you want the monitors to protect them. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, so if if you've got a if you've got a, a slab in the garage and you got a crack, then should should you have a monitor there? I would say that 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 would be so what, what I'm really looking at is do, do we actually have enough monitors or do we have a token number of monitors to say that they they had provided a a, a basis a square footage to to uh, on how many monitors they were going to place in any any home. If any of that would change and we would start seeing some some levels of anything, I think that may change those those uh, standards that are in place now. But, but there, there, right there, now. there are two things we ought to acknowledge about the gases that we're talking about. Gas that we're talking about are H2S, which hugs the ground. The other gas that we're talking about is methane, which does exactly the opposite. And, and spreads very, very rapidly. As long as I have an LEL monitor, which is looking for the methane, and it's, you know, up above my head, um, and it's in an area that uh, I am in, it's extremely unlikely and mind you, these things are not set to go off at the level where an explosion could occur. Right. They are set to go off at a level that's 10% of the level at which the explosion could occur. So it's extremely unlikely, if nothing has occurred, that there has been any methane that has gotten into my house. If you were to have natural gas, in your house, you'd probably get more leakage from an occasional flame out on the on the on the Probably. kitchen stove than you would from what we have measured. Now the other one is H2S. And the thing to remember about the H2S, this thing is set to go off at an incredibly low level. I don't remember the numbers like I do for the uh, for the LEL. But it's set to go off at a very low level. I personally worked in an area that looked at sulfur recovery in a major refinery in this area. And I can attest to the fact that the kind of levels that we're at, that we're talking about, there's no chance that you'd be able to stand the odor unless you were a very, very unique person that just couldn't smell H2S. But there are very, very few of those people. You say, I'm one. Oh, okay. Okay. 
But that's true with with H2S once you get above, I think it's 38 parts per million, then you will, sure. would lose the sense of smell. Sure, sure. that's right. That's but, right. But that's what the monitor's fault. That's right. But the monitor would go off. Yeah, I think the monitors are set to go off before odor threshold. I think it's five. Oh, I, I thought they lowered it to five. I know it, the default on them is 10 below. <coughs> when you take it out the box, but I thought they changed from the top. <coughs> All I can tell you, since your sniffer apparently doesn't work on H2S, the rest of us have not experienced H2S, either through our sniffer, or, you know, our nose, or through the uh, actual monitor. And maybe that can, and now I admit my house is not your house. And you know, eighty other people's house is so, not your house. So I had a, but it, I had a geologist come. Unlikely. Had a geologist come out with an instrument and got a hit on H two S just across the road from. Well, I can attest to the fact that I smelled H two S in the swamp, mm -hmm. just from decaying vegetation. So if it's across the road from you. Knowing from where you live, that could be what it is. I, I'm not, and then, I, I, and then, not, and then, and then it could, and then it could be something else. else. Yeah. Yeah. They, 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 they but more likely, it's swamp. Yeah. Okay. So it's not the way. Being in the swamp, that is. Okay. In all the sampling we've done, the only <laughs> elevated H2S we've seen is two locations on our facility. One was the original. Um, well, we drilled deep into the uh, near Cap Rock and we vented off gas that quickly came to water and it came very strong with H2S and we've since then plugged that. Well, you're water. also sitting on a big layer of uh, calcium sulfate, right, in the which Cap makes H2S. And that's why we think we found that. The other one, the other place we saw H2S was when we were bringing crude oil and gas out of OG3A. And we had gas busters and monitors over there in a flare because we did see an <coughs> elevated H2S, but that's expected when you bring out sour crude. Now, didn't, didn't you get a, a hit on H2S at the, um, uh, where Scott Hood is, where the, the birdhouse, and when they drilled into the slab? I think there was H2S. We, we may there, have seen a very low there, level of H2S, but I don't think it was that one. And then there was, uh, I think you had a hit on H2S. Uh, the log cabin on on, uh, on uh, sauce pecan. The under slab, yes. And if under, I recall, they, they, between yeah. 7 to 15 parts per million yeah. yes. in general. I don't remember exactly which one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was one where we sampled the gas, and the gas came back all microbial, which is from vegetative okay. decay, which was one would expect. You'll tend to see both of those in that situation. Other questions? Yeah, I have a question. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to try to stay here or not, but I would really like to know if the elevation of our property or this area has subsided any. Can you all tell us that? When we, the last, we turned in a, a semi-annual subsidence report, when we looked at uh, all the area, we did not see any subsidence outside normal subsidence across the whole region associated with South Louisiana. We didn't see any localized settlement or subsidence across the area, other than right around the sinkhole. Inside the containment burn? Right around the sinkhole, yeah. This area, I mean, this is, there's no dirt there, and then there's a subsidence bowl around it. That's where we saw uh, from survey to survey with the, the satellite data. But outside Highway 70 in this area, we didn't see any subsidence that we, that our consultants consider excess of normal regional subsidence that's occurring everywhere in South Louisiana. Okay. I'd also like to know what y'all plans are with the property y'all acquiring. All of the property we have and most likely will acquire. Yeah. At this, as I said before, we have no desire to be a homeowner. 
we're not going to rent or sell this you know, houses to anybody else. So, you know, we're trying to get a complete count how many houses we're going to have, but then the plans are to demolish them or turn them over to a demolition company so they can move them out and demolish all. Our goal is to take it back to green grass. Really? When do you think that will happen? Uh, it, it'll probably, I hope to have it start late this year, but that's the best case because it's dependent on the insurance carriers. And our insurance company carriers haven't exactly worked with us on a lot of things. So is it Texas Brian's property or is it the insurance company's property? It's Texas Brian's property. As held by Bayou Corn Holdings, an affiliate of Texas Brian. So you're saying it's the insurance company's decision of whether to demolish or not? No, it's hard it, to be quite blunt, it's our decision. Um, the insurance company is basically putting the requirements that doesn't want anybody to live in the house anymore. Once we bought it, we don't want to have to have another claim against it. The challenge is, we have spent a lot of money on this that we haven't been reimbursed by our insurance company. So before I go spend a bunch more, I'd like to have their commitment that they're going to reimburse me for this. For demolition? For demolition. That's why I paid insurance premiums. <laughs> and if they don't, you, you're going to leave, leave there and go derelict, or you're going to run them out? No, we're not going to rent them out. I can assure you that we'll eventually get so, them demolished. But I mean, if the insurance sure doesn't allow you to demolish them or doesn't reimburse you, then they're out of the question. So now you don't give a damn whether they, uh, if somebody comes in and then sues you forty years or not, because you're insured. You're insured. Uh, you don't. You don't care about. Well, I insured. care about it. No, I mean you don't care about what the insurer thinks though, because he's not backing you up. I'm not sure what your question is. 